How contract law works. The intention to create legal relations. For a contract to exist, there has to be several ingredients. Offer, acceptance, consideration, and intention to create legal relations. When these are all present, you have a binding contract. The courts take an objective rather than a subjective approach to determining whether or not the parties intended to create legal relations. When determining whether there is intention to create legal relations, the law broadly recognises two categories of agreement. Commercial and business agreements and social and domestic agreements. For both of these categories, the law recognises what is called a rebuttable presumption. A rebuttable presumption is a presumption which can be defeated if evidence can show it not to be true. With commercial and business agreements, the presumption is that the parties do intend to create legal relations. The question of whether or not an agreement is one of a business or commercial nature will depend on the facts. The case of SO Petroleum Company Limited vs Commissioners for Customs and Excise from 1975 illustrates this. In 1970, the fuel company, SO, ran a promotion whereby motorists, on purchasing four gallons of petrol at an SO petrol station, would be entitled to receive a medal, showing the face of one of the players from England's 1970 World Cup football team. 1970. The majority of the House of Lords held that the commercial context in which the coins were advertised was enough to show that the parties intended to be legally bound, and hence there was a legally binding contract between the motorists and Esso for the World Cup medallions. If the agreement contains a clause to the effect that it is binding in honour only, this will usually show that the parties did not intend for the agreement to be legally enforceable. Rose and Frank Company vs Compton Brothers, 1925. Likewise, commercial agreements which are made subject to contract, expressly or impliedly, may also not be legally enforceable. Letters of comfort will also not generally be held to be legally binding. Kleinwart Benson vs Malaysian Mining Company Limited, 1989. For the sake of clarity, a letter of comfort is a letter of assurance regarding a party's intention, for example, as regards payment of a due sum of money under an existing agreement. In all such cases, the burden of proof is on the party asserting that no contract exists, and the onus of proving this is a heavy one. Lord Justice McGaw in Edwards and Skyways, 1964. Social and Domestic Agreements The rebuttable presumption in cases involving social or domestic agreement is that the parties do not intend to create legal relations. Social and domestic agreements include agreements between family members and close friends, and general rule is that they are not classed as legally binding. Agreements between parents and children are generally not held to be legally binding. Jones and Padavatan, 1968, involved an agreement between a mother and daughter as regards to payment of maintenance and a lease on a flat during the duration of the daughter's studying for the bar examinations in London. After their relationship deteriorated, the mother sued for possession of the flat, and the daughter argued that there was a binding contract to let her stay there while she completed her studies. It was held that there was no binding contract. Social arrangements are also generally not held to be legally binding. Lens and Devonshire Social Club, The Times, 4th of December 1914, winner of a competition held by a golf club, could not claim for his prize because nobody involved actually intended to be legally bound. However, in the case of marital agreements, if the couple is separated at the time, then they are more likely to have intended to create legal relations in respect of any agreement they enter into. Contrast the famous cases of Merit and Merit and Balfour and Balfour. Moreover, an agreement to share the ownership or tenancy of the matrimonial home, bank accounts, savings accounts, or other assets will be held to create legal relations, as was shown in Grantino and Radmacher, 2010. Also, see Snelling vs Snelling from 1973. Legal relations were created when three brothers who were directors of a family company entered into an agreement regarding the running of the company. Remember the decision too in the case of Albert and Motor Insurance Bureau, 1971. A driver who charged people money for lifts to work was held to have been acting on a commercial basis. This was not a social arrangement. Remember too that where there is a payment of money, or the agreement has been put into writing, or there is some form of mutuality, as in Simpkins and Pays 1955, this is also evidence that can rebut the presumption.
And now it's time for Rory Mayo's top tips. Rory Mayo's top tips. In order for the courts to uphold an agreement, there must be certainty of contractual terms. In the case of Scamlin Austin, 1941, a clause in a contract regarding the sale of a van stating that the sale was to be on higher purchase terms was held to be too vague. It is worth noting that where possible, the courts will generally try to hold parties to the original agreements as was put forward in the case of Hillis & Co. vs Arcos Limited, 1932. 